What's up my fellow Neo players, I'm Project and today I'm bringing you a video of various tips and methods to answer some questions or just make certain tasks easier for you. Most of this stuff should be common knowledge for experienced players, but for newer progressing players, hopefully you find the contents of this video useful to you. Starting off with my first tip, which is really a combination of tips, this is specifically for new players just starting the game or progressing through their first playthrough on Way of the Samurai, otherwise referred to as New Game. I'll try to make the commentary for this section a bridge to save everyone time, so I won't go into full detail explaining everything as much as possible, but hopefully you can discern what I'm talking about. So with that said, let's get started. Kato is the best Guardian Spirit to use throughout the entirety of New Game, and it's one of the available starting spirits you can pick upon starting a new character. So pick Charmander, I mean Kato, the Fire Dog. The main stat everyone should be raising first as soon as they make a new character is getting Spirit to 10. This will unlock all of Kato's Guardian's passives to aid you. Speaking of stats, a mistake I see new players make is not investing into magic or dexterity immediately. Investing into damage stats your weapon scales off is not ideal. Anmyo is super powerful in this game and so is Nujitsu, so the stats beside Spirit you should raise first from magic and dexterity to 10. Then you can invest into stamina to wear heavier gear if you want, or into your other stats like body or strength for skill points, but then jump back into pumping magic and dexterity to 20 around region 3. On Mio, such as Carnage or Sloth or Kekai Talisman, or Ninjutsu such as Quick Chain Scroll are much more beneficial than raising your other stats for damage. You unlock Omnio and Ninjutsu as you progress, but it's important to be able to use them as soon as possible as they make the game a much smoother experience. Similarly, skills are much better than normal attacks for the most part, especially with Kato, so you want to rely on skills to take down bosses after you begin to unlock them. And lastly, regarding builds, since that's mainly what I'm known for, builds, unfortunately, are mostly irrelevant in new game because you simply will find better upgrades too fast that will make your older gear obsolete. Which is why I don't make builds for new games since you're just going to replace everything with better random gear you find in the next few missions you go through. So one of the best ways to upgrade your gear is by getting new gear dropped from player revenants. The NPCs you can summon from the red graves you encounter in your playthrough if you're online, giving you a chance to get their armor once defeated. So defeating revenants every other mission or so keeps your gear up to date and is mostly superior to loot you find from normal enemies or bosses. If you were to use any armor sets however, Sonata, Kingo, Warrior of the West, and Red Demon are all the sets you should go for early on as they're medium to light armor sets, meaning you don't need high stamina investment to wear them at B or A agility, and they all have great 5 piece bonuses for your first playthrough. And that's all the tips I'll give for the new players for this video, so now we can move on to more general stuff that can apply to anyone playing the game. Tip number 2. You can only have one damage stat on a weapon besides an elemental stat, final blow damage, and change to attack. Key damage does not clash with this as it doesn't cause actual damage, it causes key damage. So you can have key damage, an elemental stat, final blow damage, change to attack, and one other damage stat on a weapon all at the same time. But you cannot have more than that. And the only one you can change is the one damage stat which may be any non-duplicate damage stat of your choice. So no matter how many times you try to reforge a second damage stat, you'll never get one. So don't waste your materials. This also holds true for inheriting a damage stat onto your weapon. Lots of people tell me, Oh, I can't put close combat damage on my weapon. And that's probably because you already have a damage stat on your weapon currently that's preventing you from inheriting that damage stat onto your weapon. As like I said, you're only allowed one damage stat on your weapon, that's not the specific ones I mentioned. So you're going to have to reforge the damage stat that's currently already on your weapon in order to put the new one on. Likewise, to get a different damage stat, you're going to have to reforge the current damage stat that's already on your weapon. If you have no damage stat, then you can reforge whatever till you get a damage stat. But to reforge for a different damage stat, you're going to have to reforge the current damage stat on your weapon until you get your desired damage stat. Yellow damage stats such as familiarity or agility damage bonus count as damage stats. So if you get one of those, that's the only damage stat you can get unless you reforge it. Tip numero 3. Forging armor cuts the stat requirements on your armor in half. So I get this question asked a lot, especially on my build videos with people asking, Why does your Kingo armor only need 6 body and 6 strength? Mine needs 13-13. 
and that's because I forged my armor, thus lowering the required stats necessary to gain the effects of the armor. In this case, Kingos becomes 6-6 six, six instead of 13-13, and if it's an odd number, it gets rounded down instead of rounded up. So it doesn't become 7-7, seven, seven, it becomes 6-6. Six, six. So forging armor saves you points, I really recommend it. For my fourth tip, I'll be going over a method on how to farm smithing tech easier or faster. Basically, what you do is kill the boss. If they do not drop the smithing text, you press the touchpad, go to game settings, then press the return to title screen option. This will put you back at the main starting menu of the game, and when you press continue or load your save, you will be back at the last shrine you prayed at in that mission. This speeds up the process, saving you time from having to redo the mission all over from the beginning if you completed it. So do not complete the mission by holding a circle when that glowing complete mission thing pops up after you kill the boss. What you do is simply quit the game, you restart at the last shrine you prayed at, speed run back to the boss and kill it again for another chance of the text dropping. And you keep repeating this and repeating this until you get that glorious smithing text you've been yearning to get. And for those of you unaware, smithing texts are obtained from bosses or mission rewards in order to craft armor or weapons, usually gear the boss itself uses. So using this method is great in speeding up that farming process for you. Tip number five. So I still get this question asked a lot despite having a video on it already, but I'll do this once more with commentary this time in hopes that people will fully understand the process so I don't have to ask this anymore. The question being, how do I put attack on all my other armor pieces besides gloves? Now attack is unique to gloves in that it can't be rolled onto other armor pieces. However, if you get an attack stat with an inheritable symbol next to it on your gloves, you can then soul match that attack stat onto your other armor pieces, thus allowing you to have attack on all your armor. And the only way to do this is max the familiarity on the glove with an inheritable attack stat on them. Familiarity is the blue bar right below the name of the equipment, and when reached to max, in this case 999 familiarity for divine items, you can then pass on the inheritable effect to another equipment piece of the same category, in this case, armor. So, you take your armor piece you want to attack on, as you see in the back it will be this helmet, then you take the gloves with inheritable attack that has its familiarity maxed out, and then use it as a material base. Soul match it, and then voila, you got a headgear with attack on them, and you simply repeat this for the rest of your armors and you'll gain a nice sum of attack to deal more damage. Tip number 6 is a lengthy one, but this is regarding ways to get max fam, short for familiarity because I'm tired of saying that long word over and over again. Um, anyways, the first is to periodically check Tomei's special finds section after you beat a mission, as sometimes she sells you Nekama glue which raises fam. Not a lot, but it's something. The second method is to do the Samurai from Sereyama in Omi region. The mission rewards you 3 Nekawa glue and you basically speedrun the level to beat the boss, then you gain your glue. Each run takes 2-3 to three minutes with low time, so in 6 or 7 minutes you can get max fam on all your armor. However, even that's fairly slow, so I'm going to show you my method for getting max fam much faster in under 2 minutes. And I honestly think it's one of the best methods as raising fam is dependent on the amount of attacks you use, not the damage you deal. So with this method, we're going to take advantage of that and hit a target where we hit multiple targets at once. And the move we're going to use is Windstorm from Dual Swords. So for this method, you're going to want Dual Swords as low attack as possible. As you can see, my attack 956, you're going to want it under a, under a thousand. This is on New Game Plus. I chose the ONU Swords, I'm not going to pronounce that name. But these Dual Swords are here as they always come with close combat attack key reduction so we can save key and we can spin more often but yeah I recommend forging these if you have it and for our other gear basically equip anything you want um, again you want to keep damage down so you don't really want armor bonuses um, damage armor bonuses so I just chose whatever I can be to be decently defensive then you have your gloves with your inheritable attack on them as you can see there, zero fam, so we're going to get these gloves to 999 maxed out fam. For your charms, you're going to want familiarity bonus, or fam bonus, um, on both of them. To speed up the process, really recommend that. We're going to use Itokuri, 
For more fan bonus, as you see there, 18% at level 30. And yeah, we're just going to use ONU and we're going to use Windstorm um, instead of Water Sword. Water Sword locks you in place, so it's not really that great compared to Windstorm. With Windstorm, I like Windstorm because you can move around and dodge stuff, so you're not um, prone to getting hit. Um, you obviously don't want to get hit. You can do this with no armor um, if you want. But basically, yeah, you just kill um, Ogres as fast as possible. I kind of slopped it up, so I'm kind of speeding the process here. Um, your damage is obviously going to be low because you have no armor bonuses and have little attack. But basically, for Joro Gumo, the spider, you want to spin, hit her butt, and wait till she shields up like this. Then you maneuver around her, and when you use Windstorm, as you can see, I hit multiple targets at once because her legs count as multiple hits. So you raise your familiarity really fast with this method. You just keep dodging her attacks, go behind her butt, and spin, and keep doing this until you get maxed out familiarity. You want to dodge her attacks, obviously. Um, the way to do that is to get in front of her, and then she'll attack, and then you can dodge around to her backside, and then spin to win. Um, again, you want low damage as possible, because if you get her to half health, um, she won't go into this mode anymore, and she also gets the help of uh, another spider uh, enemy. So yeah, just dodge her attacks, keep spinning, and eventually you'll get max fam in under a minute. It takes under a minute for me, or under two minutes, I mean. Um, really fast method for maxing familiarity, and the only requirements is dual swords as low as possible. Um, you probably don't even need the key reduction, as you can see my keys above half full, so... Um, yeah, that's, that's it. As you can see there, Redeem and Armor gloves are now maxed out and it took that fast. So, this is the method I use, so I really recommend it. Tip number seven. The maximum equipment weight rate... Oh god, that's a tongue twister. <laughs> For you to reach A agility with 99 stamina and 99 strength is 56.6%. Anything higher than that, you'll never get A agility despite having 99 strength and 99 stamina. I tried combining various armor pieces, but the only percents I can get were 56.6 and 56.9, and 56.9 was too heavy. So I'm assuming 56.6 is the maximum weight you can be, so anything higher than that and you're SOL, so don't even try it. I just wanted to make sure you guys are aware of that. Tip number eight. Sticking to equipment weight subject, it was discovered about two to three weeks back from Reddit users and the like that there's some kind of hidden damage increase in relation to equipment weight, favoring heavier armor setups. So A agility is not the best course of action if damage is a priority, as you'll gain more damage by being heavier. The information is still kind of shaky, but basically, you gain a small amount of damage as you get heavier, and when you reach 30.1 weight, you get a nice 10% damage increase. It should be pointed out that the number I'm referring to is the first weight number before your max, not the percent below that. So it has to be 30.1 slash 50 or whatever your max is. Um, so that number is what I'm talking about. So yeah, if you plan not to be A agility, then aim for 30.1 or higher weight total to gain a nice damage increase. As you've seen in this clip I'm showing, where I equip a piece of armor with no attack on it, my attack stat was the same as before, with no chest armor, no armor bonuses, yet just surpassing 30.1 threshold to gain damage, and my damage numbers went up. Proving that yes, in fact, we do have some sort of hidden Tatanashi equipment weight damage bonus going on in the background. Tip number 9. For this method we head to Tokai region in New Game Plus, and the purpose of this is to take on the Three Souls mission. The reason for this is this mission is one of my favorite farming methods for farming sake and soul stones, as well as Himurogi branches for Amrita farming runs for my living weapon builds, or just wanting to farm sake in general to level up faster for other builds that don't use living weapon. Um, now there's two routes I'll be showing. The first is to head right near the stones to pick up the branch, then run along this path right here, turn right in the doorway, a tango guards the sake, which you can either kill or run past it, pick up the sake and then branch out of the mission 
and you got your sake in under 30 seconds. Really fast method for that, for farming sake. Now for the second route, it's a bit longer, but you do get an extra three large soul stones upon mission complete, um, which I use to fuel my living weapon builds, such as my build. And basically you just run along this path after you pick up the branch like before. You kill this um, Oni here. You can either gesture to this wall to make it open or kill it like I usually do, um, whichever is faster for you. Kill this guy right here. Continue along this path, go up here, and you unlock the shortcut, take this wooden bar out the way, open this door so you can get your sake, right to the left of it. You kill the Tengu if you can, I usually do it just to get him out the way because he usually follows you. So you pick up the sake, and basically you enter this little house here, with three little one-eyed Onis inside. You gotta be careful of the licks however as they can steal a chunk of your Mrita. And if you kill them in child form, you lose that Emrita permanently. So I recommend you do this mission only if you don't care if you lose Emrita. If you do want to keep your Emrita, however, let them transform after licking you into the big version. Then you kill them and you will gain back all the Emrita they stole from you. And again, upon mission complete, you get your large soul stones, which always fill up your living weapon bar to full, and you're ready to embark on your farming adventures. And if you plan to farm Demon King Revealed mission for Amrita, the house after this crafty ninja Oni jumps down contains a sake and a large spirit stone in the chest within it, saving you time from having to farm sake. And finally, my last tip is farming the infamous and much sought after Yasukane Magatama. Patch 1.06 added a mission called Return of the Gourd, which gives a guarantee Asakane upon beating it for the first time. But if you don't have Omi region unlocked, or just want to farm for more Asakane, this Trail of the Master method is the next best chance at getting one. The first thing I do is blast a ghoul and floating head off the beams, as they usually interrupt your path on the way to the charms. Then just follow the path I'm going, and the good thing about this mission is you have three chances at getting Asakane per run. And yes, I did say chances as you're not guaranteed a Yasukane, but this is still the best method for farming it if you do not do the Gorn mission. But anyways, drop down from the beams in this area, open the shortcut, and basically what you do is check the corpse. If it does not drop a Yasukane, don't pick anything up. Simply pray at the shrine, this will reset the corpse so you have a second chance at a Yasukane. Check it again, if it doesn't drop it, then this time, pick up the mask, and only the mask, then pray at the shrine once more, for one more chance at the charm becoming a Yasukani. If it doesn't, then simply branch out of the mission and start all over again, and that's the method for farming Yasukani. You simply repeat this, until you get one. And that, my yokai hunters, about wraps it up for all the drops of knowledge I'll give out this video. I really hope some of you found this video useful as I put a lot of work and time into it, trying to make it as decent as possible. But regarding any info I give out this video, as a disclaimer, this is all for patch 1.06 before DLC arrives. Who knows what they'll add or change with the update that could alter some of the stuff I said, or become better methods than the ones I gave out. But yeah, for now, this can all apply before the DLC and hopefully after as well. Speaking of DLC though, it's just a few days away, Japanese might get it sooner, not sure if May 2nd was for the Japanese release or global, but either case, super excited to finally play some of the new stuff. Hopefully they can put a tad more info out though, maybe even a trailer or something, I would love to go over that for you guys, but uh, yeah, let me just stop talking here because this is a super long video. As always, thanks so much for the support, we're 4k subs now, we live in a dream boys, Hey, <laughs> well. <laughs> Okay. What a loser. <laughs> uh, anyways, leave a like if you enjoyed the video. It really helps me out. I uh, really appreciate the likes. Comment down below with any questions or tips of your own to help other people in the comment section. And subscribe for more Neo Epicness. Sayonara!